Welcome to the Undisputed Podcast. I'm your host, Jenny Taft. This podcast is the full show from today's episode of Undisputed from start to finish. We've got a busy slate, so skip Shannon. Let's get to it. Welcome to Undisputed on Veterans Day, and we will be honoring the troops throughout the day right here. I'm Jenny Taft with Skip Bayless and Shannon Sharp. Good morning, guys. Good morning. Good morning. Yeah, good morning. Good morning, Skip. Oh, I hereby, I, I hereby nominate Russell Westbrook for mayor of Los Angeles because I think he could win today. In fact, uh, Shannon, I, I heard they were going to have a parade today until they heard you were out of town. So they said, well, we better wait until Monday, right? Yeah, yeah. Okay. But we're going to have one. We're just planning the route and, you know, how big it's going to be. But we're going to have a parade. You saw what we're capable of, Skip. Uh, That's without the goat. You I saw it. I saw a championship team last night. <laughs> I saw yeah. the goat. Oh, he was celebrating. And Shannon, I feel the gloating from afar right now. And yeah, that is yeah, why yeah. you're smiling so big because the Lakers <laughs> won their second straight overtime game last night, beating the Heat 120-117. Jimmy Butler left the game with a sprained ankle and Russell Westbrook took advantage, finishing with a triple-double and leading the team and scoring with 25 points. So, Shannon, what is the biggest reason the Lakers finally beat a good team? Well, Skip, again, they got another. Th- they got a third scoring option because normally it's been, it's been, you know, sometimes it's, it's always AD. AD's been there all year long, and you know, the other night it was Melo, and then you know, Russ had his ups and downs. But last night it was Malik Monk. Malik Monk was sensational. Actually, the bench was sensational because Melo is a bench player, Skip. I think sometimes we forget that because he's been such a starter and a great player for such a long time. We forget that Melo comes off the bench now, but Malik Monk. And Wayne Ellington, Skip, they shot the lights out of the ball last night, and they needed every big shot. Malik Monk had, I'm looking at 27 points last night, Skip, and if you go back and look at the fourth quarter, he and Russ had 21 of their 30 points. And so that was the difference in the ball game, Skip, because you look at 445 left in the ball game, they're down nine. Those are games that the Lakers normally lose. Yep. They go on a 13 to two run and get back and tie this thing up and really should have won it in regulation. And the Heat missed some easy looks down the stretch. Tyler Hero had a wide open three that would have given them the, given them the game in regulation. And I'm glad he kind of got cold at the end of the ball game. But I think, Skip, as long as you can find that third scoring option, because when they signed Russ, that's one of the reasons that they signed Russ, so he can be the third scoring option, because you can pretty much count on him. He's going to do one thing, Skip. He's going to put up enough shots where he get points, but... If you let him have the ball too much, he's also going to turn the ball over enough that you're going to feel like, damn, we could possibly lose this ball game. And again, he almost had a quadruple double. Skip, I think I'm going to start charting because I think they're really generous with Russ on the turnovers mm-hmm. because they only had him for eight. But by my calculation, it might have been 10 or 11. I agree. But I'll leave, I'll leave him at eight. But Skip, down the stretch, he played really well. He made some big, big shots down the stretch in the fourth quarter. Now, I believe he could have got a better shot. And at no point in time, when I saw him get the ball, he waved him off. It is like 12 seconds. I said, nobody else is getting this ball. Russ is going to take this last shot. And I said, we're going to overtime. At no point in time did I think that shot he was about to shoot was going to go in. But I believe the biggest difference in this ball game, Skip, was our bench. You get 51 points from your bench, and you get Wayne Ellington, who's just coming back. He was 4 of 6 from the three, uh, uh, the three line. Wayne, uh, Malik Monk was 4 of 7 from the three line. And Skip, when you look at at it, that was the difference. 18 to 38 from the three. That's 47 percent. 50 percent from the floor. You're supposed to lose this game if you turn the ball over 22 times and the other team turns it over 14. They go 27 of 35 from the free throw line. You go 10 of 16 from the free throw line. But when you make 18 threes out of 38, when you shoot 50 percent from the floor, you're going to give yourself a chance. The game probably shouldn't have been this close nope. if the Lakers just do a better job of taking care of the foot, uh, basketball. They didn't, but they found a way to win. Skip, we've talked about this for the first two, three weeks of the season, is that they're finding ways to lose. Where last night, they dug down, down nine, with 445 left, go on that run, and they found a way to get the game to overtime and win the ball game. I like what I saw because you do know this, whether it's one month, one week, or two months, Goat James is coming back. Mm. And when he comes back with the way Monk is playing, Wayne Ellington is getting back into shape. 
Avery Bradley gave us some quality minutes last night. You are in trouble. Hmm. Yeah, you're right. I, I forgot all about Lagon James. I, I don't know whatever happened. Here. Oh yeah, he was that guy in street clothes last night. Yeah. He, Carrie, who was head coaching the Lakers. Did you see Le LeBron? He took the game over. He imposed his will on the game while in street clothes. LeBron James was co constantly arguing with or conferring with the referees like he was in charge of the team. I, I actually liked it because it created aura and mystique. Another home game for the Lakers. And by the way, LeBron rigged the schedule for the Lakers to have 12 <laughs> of their first 15 games at home. I have never, ever seen anything like it. Just when I thought the home streak had ended, the home stretch. Now, here comes Minnesota, San Antonio, and then the Bulls. That's back-to-back -back San Antonio Bulls on Sunday, Monday night. It, yeah. Will it ever end? I, I mean, is this the first time in the history of the league that, that a team's going to play like 60 of 82 games at home? I don't know. Man, you know good when they're not playing no 60, no 82 games at home. Yeah, but at, at least LeBron finally just said, I, I, you know, I, I'm not even going to disguise it anymore. I'm going to act as the head coach because we See, know he the, is the head coach. We know <laughs> no, he is the GM. You even agreed with me yesterday. Yeah, he's the GM. This is the team that he put together wrongly in your estimation. You know what, Skip? When I saw LeBron standing there last night and he was coaching, you know, he's helping giving guys some pointers. Yep. I said, man, Skip Bayless go talk about that's right. He doing Frank Vogel job. They need to get rid I, I knew you were going to say something like this. I just knew it. I led the show with it. And by the <laughs> way, I did like your Freudian slip, your reference to the basketball being a football because Russell Westbrook often <laughs> dribbles a basketball like it's a football. And as you know, it would be very difficult to dribble a football, right? Because it's yeah. oblong and it has <laughs> points on the end and it would just bounce haywire on you. And that's how Russ often seems to dribble the ball, especially last night in overtime. Which brings me to my biggest takeaway from last night. I thought the Lakers were extremely lucky to finally beat a good team. And I do give yeah. you Miami is a good team, especially when Miami has Jimmy Butler, their leading scorer, and their clutch scorer, their home James scorer, as re referring to LeBron, because Jimmy Butler obviously turned his ankle near the end of the first quarter and was gone for the last three quarters and overtime of this game, or I would suggest to you that the Heat would have figured a way to win this game. So that was the first break that you got. And in the end, I was not all that impressed with the victory because the basketball gods shone on you last night. <laughs> the basketball gods said, let there be Lakers tonight because you got one break after another. And I'm going to start with the shot that Russell West Brick made at the end of the third quarter to cut it down to only a four point game. It seemed like it was oh, about no. to be over. And can we see Westbrook's shot here at the end of the third quarter? You talk about that bank He's three. Up and the bank is open. <laughs> and I don't think he aimed at the backboard. I think he shot it so long and so hard that it banked in. Way to go, Russell Westbrook. You told him to bank the shot in. You say that's his shot. I you know. say he should start banking threes. Okay, do you think he aimed? I don't think <laughs> no. he aimed on that no, one. No, he didn't. Thank you. No. Okay. So that was the first sign that it's just going to be your night. So then, to your point, all of a sudden the Heat lead by nine with 445 left, and then comes the fateful, pivotal moment of this game. Duncan Robinson had a horrendous game. Let me just sum it up on Duncan Robinson. He was 4 of 16 from the floor. He was 3 of 13 from three. And yeah. he went to the free throw line late and missed two out of three after he got fouled yeah. on a three-point play. So he couldn't even make his free throws. And he's like that because he's a much better three-point shooter than free throw shooter. Don't, Which don't, is odd. Yeah, don't ask me to explain. <laughs> okay, so we get to the pivotal moment. This is 4.07 left in the game. To go up, back up nine points, can we see Duncan Robinson? He gets wide open for a layup on Malik Monk, a left-handed lay-in. He's just going to lay it in, and he blows it. And Monk comes back to the other end and says, I got this. And he shoots it from down, way downtown, <laughs> and yeah. makes it. And, and all of a sudden, I look up and I say, wait a second, you, you just cut it back to four points, you're back in the game. And yep. then can we see your next sign that the gods were with you? The Avery, Avery Bradley. Bradley three. <laughs> this is 312 left in the game. This is to cut it to a three-point game. Here's Avery Bradley, and he, he was been hot. He'd made his first three threes, 
and he just rips it in off the glass. Did he <laughs> aim for glass? Nothing no. but glass. No. <laughs> he almost broke the glass. He and Westbrook, I, I think they needed to go check the glass, make sure it wasn't cracked by either of those shots. Both of them fell, and that's when I said, okay, it's just the Lakers' night. <laughs> and then a shock to me happened down the stretch. Under a minute left, Russell Westbrook, not Brick, Russell Westbrook said, Give me the damn ball and get out of my way. And what did he do at 52 seconds left and then at 27.4 seconds left? Could we please see Wes Brook in action? He, de bam, dared him to take that jump shot and he nailed it. I was like, you he made did. it. And then he just drives in the lane on P.J. Tucker and shoots a fadeaway and he makes it. These are two big-time clutch shots to put the Lakers up two and the Lakers up two. Well, I, that's when I said... Let's, let's nominate him for mayor of L.A. because I thought he had won the game. But then we come back to the other end, and I'm not sure that Westbrook was guarding P.J. Tucker because it's kind of hard to see on this play. But No, I think you, you're, talking about the, you're talking about the putback. No, yeah. I think it's Melo. That's Melo. I, I'm you not, see Melo leaves. Okay. Melo, that was yeah, Melo. It's probably guy. Melo. It's probably yeah. Melo. But it's also up to Russ to at least... Ha have an eye out to, that, that you got to screen somebody, and he doesn't screen PJ running in from the corner. And Tyler Hero finally missed a three, and Russ didn't screen at all or even make an attempt to, and that ties the game. And that was actually the first three. Tyler Hero had made five threes, and then he ends up missing his last three threes. So right. the point is, all of a sudden, the game is tied. And then a classic situation happened, obviously, with no King James. And here we go. It's the last possession. It's a long possession because it's 23.5 seconds left. And let's see Westbrook in action here. The new star of L.A., he's dribbling, he's dribbling. And then Melo <laughs> says, well, I'm going to go up to the top of the lane here. I'm, I'm going to go and... Carmelo Anthony has his hands up. Give me the ball. Give me the ball. I'm hot. I'm making 64% of my threes at home. And Russ says, are you serious? It was almost like Jordan and Pippen in game six at the end when Jordan looked, took one look at Pippen and said, nah. But it's Skip. Russell Westbrook, did you think that shot was going in? You did not. No. Skip, but you, you talked about you just showed. The previous two shots, he dribbled the ball and got within 15 feet. The other, he got within 10 feet. I got so it. So now, all of a sudden, with the same guy guarding him, now, bam, it was bam at the top of the yeah. key that he hit the shot yes. against. And then he backed P.J. Tucker down and shot the step back he over did. the top of. So now, you got P.J. Tucker guarding you. You could go and get the same shot that you just hit earlier. Agreed. But you, but he was feeling it, Skip. He's like, I'm about to hit this walk off, and it's about to be over. And that's and and, and and the shot and another shot I think before that, AD Skip, AD should play with his back to the basket in that situation. I get if it's two seconds on the clock like it was in the bubble and you do what you did against the Nuggets. I get that, but 12, 13, 14 seconds on the clock, AD. I need you closer to the basket. But in that situation, I want Melo to take the shot. In that situation right there, I want Melo. Uh, Russell Westbrook is currently making 28% from the three-point line. That ranks 140th of 154 qualified three-point shooters. He is abysmal from three. How can you say, I'm going to take this three when, when you are the worst superstar jump shooter in the history of this league? It's so vintage, classic Russell Westbrook. He's got no conscience. He's got no memory. He thinks he is the show. He has come home to Los Angeles where he grew up living and dying for these Lakers. He is now the point guard for the Lakers, and he and he alone is going to take the last shot. To your yes. point, the, the, the move is, the strategy is just drive the basketball. Maybe you get right. some sort of fadeaway pull up in right. the lane. Right. Or guess what? You could get fouled. All you needed right. to do was make one free throw. But mm -hmm. I do believe that Russell Westbrook has some of LeBron's disease of I don't really want to have to shoot these free throws. Because right now, 
Westbrook is averaging, uh, he's uh, 65.5% from the free throw line. That ranks 96th of 104 qualified players. So he doesn't trust himself at the line any more than LeBron trusts himself at the line. In fact, Russ may trust himself less than even LeBron does. So he wanted no part of driving and having to shoot free throws, even one out of two to make to win the game. And he said, I got this and he don't got this. You knew it and I knew it. Everybody, everybody knew it, Skip, but he didn't. He didn't get to the free throw line much. But he was well. He was he two of two last two. night. Yeah, he made he, two of two. But Skip, if you go look at overtime, the shot that Malik Monk made as the clock was running down on that runner. I mean, Tyler Hero is all over him. I think it was Tyler Hero. It might have been Duncan Robinson. Yeah. But he changes. He's going to his left. He changes it to his right and puts the ball. In. How he got this shot to fall, and then he hits a big three because they only scored what seven points, five, eight points in overtime. Yeah. He had five of them. Well, Russ didn't. Skip Russ didn't take a shot in OT. He did not, and in fact, they only took five shots to the Heat's ten, but they made three of fives to the Heat's two of ten. Right. So, guess who you had to overcome in overtime? Russell West Brick. Can <laughs> we please turnovers. see the two turnovers in overtime? These are horrendous. <laughs> It, it, he'd already committed six that you thought should have been maybe eight already. Yes. And these are the final two here. If we what could please that? see these. I, I don't know. I, Skip, I don't this know. One, this is this one got me. This what? one got me. What? Okay. That, that's the one that if you're in high school basketball, you get yanked for, right? You, you just, yes. you, you, you know, nobody would put up that. No, no church league coach would put up with that. Come on, Skip, Russ, have a plan. I don't have a plan, so I'll throw it to Duncan Robinson. How many times have we seen him, uh, Skip, get under the basket, uh, jumps up in the air with no one to pass the ball to uh, and nowhere to go with it, so he ends up throwing it back and he gets, remember, gets uh, OKC, okay, Skip. Yep. He did that and he threw it and Dory got it and went and went and laid <laughs> it up. But hold up, what about the turnover when he bounced it off AD's head? And, and it turned, I'm like, Ross, Ross, what do you do? It, it's, that's what drives you crazy, as great as he is. And you have to take the good with the bad because, Skip, at this juncture, Russ is what he is. He's who he is. And so you're going to have to take the good. Yes, he can do what he did down the stretch in the fourth quarter, but he's going to drive you crazy because in overtime, those turnovers could have been really, really costly. And he's just so reckless. And you say, well, when I said he's turning the football over, if you think about it, Skip, he plays the game, he plays the point guard position like a football player. It's like the hole is about to close, yeah. and I got to get through it as quick as I possibly can. And the ball, it, it might bounce off his foot. Somebody might get a hand in there and take the ball away. It's just that he's just so careless and so reckless with the basketball. Yep. That's what's so concerning, Skip, because you know in a playoff series, Every possession matters, especially down the stretch. If you're in a nip-tuck ball game and you don't get shots at the rim, and you, no, you can't do that, Skip. And that's that's what's so concerning. That's what's so frustrating with me. Because yeah, he got he had a twenty-five point triple double, but man, eight turnovers. And Russ said, and uh, AD was talking about Skip after the game, talking about how, you know, we've talked about, you know, telling Russ some of the things and how we can help him not turn the ball over. And then he looks down at the play sheet and like, oh, but he did have a triple double. <laughs> uh, you know, yeah. He's like, oh, mm. we, he did have a triple, not a quadruple double, though, but he was close. It was close, which brings me down to 18.7 seconds left in this basketball game in <laughs> overtime. And your Los Angeles Lakers managed to have a five-second violation on a side uh, out-of-bounds play. How do you do that with Carmelo inbounding the basketball? Because Carmelo said, I need to be, to be to get the ball, getting the ball so I can shoot it, <laughs> not taking it out for somebody else. I trust me, Skip. I trust me shooting this basketball. But, Skip, they weren't breaking. I mean, everybody's like, okay, well, you going to go, Russell? Are you going to go, hey, AD? Because went. everybody's trying to, right, go get the ball. Don't, put, don't let, Skip. Do not let uh, Melo, Melo is one of your better uh, free throw shooters. So you want him to try to come to get the ball. Let Russ take the ball out. Russ is your worst free throw shooter that's on the court. So why would I want him to get fouled? I don't know. Was it Coach LeBron's idea to have Carmelo take it out? I don't know. I'm not sure no, Vogel was even coaching last night. But I, I just know this. Your work, Skip, we believe that this. 
I, the, rough, the worst three-point shooter, the only get two guys on the team that's r- worse at shooting threes are Dwight Howard and, and DeAndre Jordan. Yeah. They're worse than Russ, than, uh, Russ shooting threes. And free throws, I don't know if uh, uh, Dwight Howard and Jordan, that might be a, it might be a nip-tuck ball game. If we go to 15, I'm not so sure Russ is going to win that one in a free-throw shooting contest. But I'm going to let Russ take the ball. First of all, Skip, he's the point guard. Don't you want your point guard to take the ball out? Yeah, but he also trust him to inbound the basketball to make the right decision there, there, because there we you know go. Russ is not a great decision maker, especially late in basketball games. And if you notice, Skip, they had him back because we don't want to throw you the ball because we don't want you to get fouled and go to the free throw line yep. because of the guys that's on the court. Yep. You're the worst of the free throw shooters. Okay. So I just, I just still, I don't want Melo in that situation because I want Melo to try to come get the ball because I trust him that he's going to be able to make the shot if they foul him down the stretch. Okay. But that's unacceptable. You can't get a five-second call in that situation. Okay, and speaking of Carmelo Anthony, there was a game being played within the game last night. It was the six-man of the year game between Tyler Hero coming off Miami's bench and Carmelo right. Anthony coming off your bench. And don't tell me they weren't just keenly aware of it, like on fire aware of it, because they were often guarding each other. And I thought Tyler was getting the better of Carmelo shooting the basketball until late when he went cold in the He clutch. went ice cold, and yeah. thank you. And let's see the first one, because he gets a pretty good look right after the five-second violation, to go ahead by one. This is to go up one. A decent look guarded by Russ at that point, and he missed it. He, he was making those all night. Yeah. And then they had to foul, so Carmelo makes one of two on the other end, which set up one more shot. This is still the, the bomb shot. Let's see the play that they ran at the end of the game. This is to tie. Look at this double screen. He gets a wide open look before AD can get out on him. And yeah. guess what he does? He muffs the he pass. Fumbled. He, he fumbled the it. pass. Yep. He, yep. he didn't catch it clean. And by the, by the time it hit the floor, I don't think he got a good grip on it. I don't think he had a good handle on it. And he didn't shoot it cleanly. And he missed that one or we would have been going to a second overtime. You're probably right. Yeah, you're probably right. They that was that was a great that was a great call because Avery Ooh. Bradley got caught up in the wash and Deadman and PJ uh, I think it was PJ Tucker yeah. ended up sitting great double screens. It might have been Kyle Lowry, but they did a great job of double screening and AD was beautiful. Got there got there late, but I agree with you. I believe if he doesn't fumble that yep. and catches it clean, yep. he's gonna stroke it because <laughs> up until that is. point he was in a tremendous rhythm. Hey. That kid ain't afraid of nothing or nobody. <laughs> and, and he's kind of like Russ in that he's got no conscience, but he's obviously a way better shooter than Russ. So yes. to me, you dodged lots of bullets last night. And I think yeah. you walk away very fortunate to finally beat a good team because you pretty much lucked into beating that good team. Congratulations. Yeah, you keep on talking about Jimmy Butler. They didn't have Jimmy Butler, but we didn't have to, we didn't have to go. We didn't have the greatest player all time on our team. Well, you you had the phony goat on the bench (laughs) who who (laughs) did have impact on the game. I thought he deserved a game ball for his coaching and his managing of the referees because I think he intimidated the referees last night. Man, stop it, Skip. You know good well he ain't intimidate no referees. See, there you go. Scared of You don't want to give a... He's the face of the league. He controls everything. Well, he was kind of all over the place, but I don't know about intimidating. Uh, We're moving on. No mercy. Hi, I'm Corporal Best and I'm Corporal Caban. We're here from CLR 37, Okinawa, Japan. I'm from Los Angeles, California. I'm from San Antonio, Texas. And we're rooting for the Dallas Dallas Cowboys. Cowboys. (laughs) Some Cowboy fans. So great to hear from our troops. We will be getting messages from them throughout the day, but I wanted to, you know, really start and ask Shannon what Veterans Day means to you, Shannon. Well, this is what it means to the young men and women that have served this country and the young men and women that's currently serving this country, this is your day to take a break. This is your day to take a bow. And for every, all of us, the civilians, to thank you for your hard work, your dedication, your brave, bravery, your service to this great nation. I want to say thank you from me and my FS1 family. Thank you for all that you've done. And take this day to yourself. Kick your feet up. Don't do anything. Just watch Undisputed and enjoy this day because you've earned it. Mm. I echo your sentiments, Shannon Sharp, and I hope that my echoing reverberates from sea to shining sea here in the United States of America. 
Obviously, this country still has its problems. You and I talk about these problems often right here on Undisputed. Yes. But this country still has the greatest thing in the world going for it, and that is freedom. And that freedom has been protected by the men and women who are serving us now and by the men and women who have served us in the past. In World War II, which was fought in two theaters, in Europe and in the Pacific, and we live to tell about it, and thank you to you, and this is your day, and you should celebrate it, and we applaud you. Really well said, Skip Shannon. Today, I've got my cousin Casey Binder on my mind. She's in D.C. right now. She's been a pilot in the Navy for years. She lands on aircraft carriers, which is about as impressive as it gets for me. And really, to all the men and women in uniform, past and present, we do honor you today. We honor you always. And today's show is all about you guys. So we're going to continue this thing. Skip Shannon. Really nice words there. Uh, The race for Odell Beckham Jr. is on with the Chiefs, Saints, Patriots, and Packers all still in play for the receiver. Fellow star wideout Devontae Adams made it clear he has pretty high hopes that OBJ will join him in Green Bay. Take a listen to what he said yesterday. I know what his mindset is based off where he just came from. He'd be happy to deal with, you know, whatever at this point. I mean, he had one catch, like six yards in his last game. So I can guarantee you we can get him more than that over here. So uh, as long as he's good with two catches, 12 yards, we should be straight. (laughs) A little smile there. Shannon, at this moment, where is your best guess where OBJ ends up? Well, Skip, I think right now he's trying to drum drum up a... um, Drum up some money. I, I think the thing is right now probably everybody's offering is the, is the league minimum. So he's trying to like, okay, who's going to give me the most money? Who's going to give me the best opportunity? Can I get, you know, uh, roster bonuses? Can I get incentives for catches, touchdowns? We make the playoffs. How far are we going to playoffs? I think that's what he's trying to do right now, Skip. But it seems to me of all the teams, the only team that I've actually heard a player say something mm-hmm. is Devontae Adams. And that means a lot to a player, Skip. He like these guys, look. All these, a lot of these guys were heavily recruited. And so a lot of these, you know, LSU and the Georgias and the Alabamas, they roll out the red carpet. And these guys like that. I heard Patrick Mahomes basically said, you know, that's, you know, that's the general manager's job. You know, Pete Carroll, you know, it's like, we'll, we'll see. Devontae Adams says, you know, his mindset, I, I, he'd, he'd love it. He'd be good over here. And so for me, I think that, that weighs a lot for the best receiver in football. To say, hey, we love to have him. We can get him more than what he got over there in Cleveland. So, Skip, at the end of the day, you're basically it's going to come down Aaron Rodgers or or Patrick Mahomes. I think, or that would that's what it would come down for me. And I think because of the Packers are doing the heavy recruitment, I think Devontae Adams going publicly and saying what he said, I think that's going to reverberate with uh, Odell. It's like, okay, dog really want me over there. He thinks I can be a, a great addition. You have to be careful, Skip. Because, and I've, and I've always tried to be mindful of this, Skip, me recruiting players, what is that saying about the players that I currently have on my team? So I had to be very, very careful. Yeah, man, we need, oh, yeah, we need this D-tackle. Oh, yeah, we need this guy. Like, what happens if I don't get him, Skip? So what the guy, what, what, what the guy that plays D-tackle? Or what is the guy that plays wide receiver? What is he going to think about, oh, oh, so we, I'm not good enough? So you have to be careful. But I think the fact of the matter is that the Devontae Adams going out of his way to, to, to open his arms and to be very uh, accepting and receptive to Odell being on this roster, I think that's going to go a long way, Skip. And I, if I had to put money, I would give a, a, a nod to Green Bay with a second coming in probably to the uh, Kansas City Chiefs. Okay, you could be right, but I'm going to go on what our friend Lil Wayne texted me this morning. And by the way, Lil Wayne created the greatest theme song in the history of sports (laughs) shows called No Mercy, and I just listened to it again. We get it in and out of every break, and thank you for that, Wayne. And I went back and forth with Wayne because Wayne had spoken yesterday to Odell, who obviously idolized Lil Wayne, Mm-hmm. in part because they both came from New Orleans. Now so was. Wayne's first takeaway from the conversation was that Odell's head was still spinning from all this, that mm-hmm. he seemed a little mentally weary of everything that had transpired over the last couple of days and indicated he needed a little bit of time just to sort through everything because he wasn't sure yet. 
but he told Lil Wayne that he thought it was going to come down to Packers or Saints, obviously mm -hmm. the New Orleans Saints. Right. And yet with the Packers, he was only interested in the rest of this year, which is what they have reportedly offered him, just a minimum contract for the rest of this year. But obviously Odell needs to know, is Aaron coming back next year or not? I can't commit long term to you. I can't sign a deal with you past just the end of this year because I don't know the outcome of where Aaron Rodgers will be next year. Will he be but in Skip, Green Bay you, or not? Go ahead. Skip, do you, do you actually think a team would, would commit to Odell past this year? He was I hoping don't. so. He, he was hoping so. He, he was hoping that would be part of the recruitment that somebody would offer him a longer term deal. No, but, I want to go prove it. OK, fine. Let me get on the prove it deal. All right. Wayne also said that he didn't get the sense from Odell that he had a burning desire to go home, you know, go back to New Orleans. Mm -mm. So so he didn't really sense that. But in the end, I asked Wayne, is it possible Odell's head is spinning to the point he just needs to take the rest of this year off and just decide in the offseason and make a, a, a more logical, you know, uh, sort of premeditated approach to this where you take your time, maybe make a couple of visits, get a better sense. And he said maybe that will be the case. But he also said that he felt a, he sensed a little A.B. in Odell, as in Antonio Brown, in that Odell is still burning to show everybody that he is still Odell. And he knows the only way to do that, back to your original point, is you got to do it with a really good team with a really good quarterback. Right. So yes. hence we're back to Packers. He did not bring up Chiefs at all. It would be mm -hmm. Packers or Saints, but Saints have, obviously at this point, Trevor, Trevor Simeon. Simeon or maybe Taysom Hill. And right. so that's probably not that appealing right now to Odell. So no. I think Packers would have the slight edge, but I'm not sure Odell's in any rush or in any mental condition right here, right now to plunge on the Packers. Of course, Skip, but you have to understand now, Odell is, was a offensive rookie of the year. He was a three-time Pro Bowl selection, and the man got cut halfway through the season. Yep. Can you imagine what that does to one's psyche, what yep. that does to I, one's I, ego? I, I would agree. Yeah. So you could understand. I mean, everybody's like, you know, it, it happens. But you're talking about at the beginning of the season, someone not someone cutting you after the season because of cap purposes is one thing. Someone not signing you when you are free agent is one thing. This team released you during the middle of the season. They said you're so bad. Your production is so you're not worth it with the production that you're giving us. Yep. We would rather move on than keep you here. Of course that does something to one psyche, Skip. Yeah, good no, point. No one, I don't care what anybody tells you, no one likes rejection. We don't mind rejecting someone, but we don't be, want to be on the receiving end of that rejection. If, and Skip, I use the relationship analogy. We've all broken up with someone. Yep. It's a lot easier when you're doing the breaking up as opposed to the other person telling you they don't want to be with you. Well, the Cleveland Browns told Odell, they don't want to be with you. Yep. See, it was okay when he told the Giants he no longer wanted to be with them. True. So it, it's a different, it, 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 it hurts. It hurts. Trust me, it hurts. So for me, I get it. I agree with you. The Saints, yes, yeah, Skip, but all homecomings are not, it's not the, the, no. the homecomings. Yeah. And you got Trevor Simeon. Okay, if that was Jameis, I would really Maybe. give that consideration. Because guess what, Skip? I'm indoors. Yeah. I like it. Hey, the, the weather is not going to be a problem. I'm going to get five, six games for the rest of this year at home. I've got, oh, so now I got, I get to go to Tampa. I get to Atlanta indoors and I get to Carolina. I mean, you might get some rain or something like that, but for the most part, Carolina, it's not going to be like Green Bay. I tell you what you're going to get in Green Bay. Every Sunday that you outdoors, I can tell you what you're going to get. When you go to, I don't know if they've, I think they've already gone to Chicago, so you don't have to worry about that. Yep. You get Detroit indoors, you get Minnesota indoors. But I can tell you what you're going to get in Minnesota from the day, the day is the what, the 11th to 12th? Oh, it's going to be cold. Yeah. You ain't, you're not getting no 60 degree and sunny in Green Bay moving forward. So you better fact you I, I understand Skip. He's played in New York. He's played in Cleveland. But man, Green Bay, Wisconsin. Oh man, that cold. That's a that cold hit different. That's that old. That's that. That's that. Old, ooh, that's that sunrise with an overcoat cold in Green Bay. What have I told you the last two days on this show? 
when it comes to Odell, the city fit is almost as important as the quarterback and offensive fit. And I'm not sure I can envision Odell Beckham Jr. in Green Bay, Wisconsin. You you know Green Bay. I have covered I many games in Green Bay. <laughs> Your brother Green played Bay. in Green Bay. He did. You visited there. You, you experienced the culture there. The fans are all-time great. The fandom is second to none. It the fandom second is second to none. To none. But it's a tiny town. It's still it used to be title town, but it's still tiny town. It's it's almost <laughs> mind blowingly small that there's an NFL franchise in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Obviously, hey, yeah, hey, it yeah. draws from the Milwaukee market and all right. of Wisconsin. But the point is, Odell had enough trouble trying to acclimate to Cleveland, Ohio. Yeah, and now you want to keep Cleveland. going around the Great Lakes and go north, north, north to Green Bay. I'm just not sure he would ever be happy. I told you yesterday, it gets dark in Green Bay now, like at 3 o'clock in the afternoon. I think you have like two hours of sunlight in, <laughs> in Green Bay at this time of year. So right. would he really be happy there? And then back to Devontae's ha-ha quote. I think that's how Devontae sort of sees it is, I'm the man here. And he, he said yeah. yesterday, I'm very secure in my skin here. Well, he should be because when in doubt... Aaron yeah. throws 12, throws it to 17. And it doesn't even matter yeah. whether 17's open. He just throws it to him because yes. he'll snatch it and catch it any way, shape, or form. Correct. So he, when he made the joke about, well, we can sure get him two catches for 12 yards. Well, I think in Devontae's mind, that's kind of how he sees Odell is just the complimentary. You could have two or three catches a game. You know, yeah. you could have 12 or 16 or 18 yards. Well, well Skip, that's what, he, that's what he would be. He would be, he would be the, the, the second receiver. I yeah. mean, it's Devontae. Devontae's number one. And normally, it's not a situation, Skip, it's going to be like Dallas, where a CD and Amari is CD is Amari is Amari is CD. Yeah. It ain't going to be no situation like that. It's not a situation where it, it's... Uh, who is that? Minnesota. Where's yeah. Adam Thielen and Justin Jefferson? No. It's a clear number one. Yep. And then it's a number two. Yep. That's just the way that's just the way it is. Because, and, because, yeah. and plus, you're coming in midway through the season. It can't be anything but that. Because if you were a true number one, Skip, you're not gonna be you're not gonna be on a, a market. True number ones don't become available during the season. True number one anything don't become no. available during the season. They might become available after the season. So I think Odell, look, if I'm looking at it from an Odell perspective, Skip, I'm going in here, I'm proving that I can still play at an elite level. I can make the plays. When I get me up, when I get opportunities, and you got a guy that can make every throw on the field, he can hit you. The back shoulder fade, he can hit you on the end cut, the yep. dagger rod, the over. Every, every route that Odell can run, Aaron Rodgers can put the ball between the one and the three. Okay. So I'm going to prove it, and then I'm going to let the chip fall with it may because, Skip, it's kind of like A.B., Basically, Odell, until Odell consistently prove it, he's basically on a one, he on one-year deal. Okay. So I think you and I agree with this. Not only is Devontae Adams the number one receiver in Green Bay, he's the number one receiver in the National yes. Football League. Yeah, he'll I think get the he's targets. widely acclaimed, but I mean, I just consider him the best receiver in pro football. Yeah, 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 okay. Skip, because he, he really doesn't have it. He can run the he can run the route tree, he can get deep, he has great hands, he can catch the but he's great in traffic. And plus, when I skip, when they when you get off the bus and you know I'm getting 14 targets yep. today, I don't care what they do. They can they can run they can run twenty five man they can play under coverage they can play bracket me they can do whatever Aaron Rodgers is throwing me fourteen balls today man you sleep good at night because you know you're gonna get your opportunities and so when I know opportunities are coming I can relax I never have to press you never have to worry about Devontae pressing because yep. why Skip they start early they start often giving him the football okay now to the final irony of Odell Beckham Jr. winding up in Green Bay. What was Odell's lowest moment of his career? In my estimation, <laughs> it was the one and only playoff game playoff he ever game. played in. And before that playoff game, he infamously took his receiving group on an <laughs> off day trek down to South Beach to hang out right. on a yacht to get ready for a game on the frozen tundra, a playoff game at Green Bay that next Sunday, and it created a furor in New York because the picture of him on the yacht got posted right. and it got widely viewed. It, it detonated on social media, and all of a sudden in the first drive that next Sunday at Green Bay, Eli got Eli playoff hot and had completed his first three passes. 
His fourth pass on third and five at the 35 went to Odell Beckham Jr., if we could please see that. This is to Odell. Huge play in the game. It's they still got him bracketed, too. Oh, God. He's yeah. doubled, but yeah, he they got him bracketed. Yep. Yep. They got mm -hmm. him bracketed, and it hits him right in the hands. And you know what Giants fandom thought of that play. They were about ready yeah. to cut bait with Odell after that play. Then on the second drive of the game, they drive it all the way down to the Packers' 28-yard line. It's first and 10 at the 28. Can we see this pass to Odell in the end zone from Eli? Playoff hot Eli. That, that's, uh, this is the guy who puts on a Harlem Globetrotter show in the pregame. You, you got that, that. That's just a drop to me by that guy. Yeah, I know it, it's wait, a tough Skip, it, I, No, it ain't no tough case. That's a drop. Okay, it's but a Skip, drop, you, yeah. Skip, you have to understand, Skip. That cold in Green Bay, yep, I got if it. you're not used to co catching the football yep. in cold, because at this point in time, oh, their hands are numb. Oh, they ain't got no feeling in his hands. He ain't no feeling in his hands, Skip. Well, he, that ball feel like, feel like a brick. He prepared for that cold <laughs> on South Beach, right? <laughs> I, I don't think that worked, right? I'm not sure that <laughs> was correct. Know, Skip. You know okay. good well it, don't, it doesn't work. And Odell being the drama king that he can be, when the game was over, it was such a disaster for him and his New York football giants that as he walked up the tunnel down the hall toward the visitor's locker room, could we see what he did to the wall? That's what he did. He took his helmet and just knocked a big hole in the wall before he went in the visitor's locker room. And that became the story the next day in the Big Apple, as in Manhattan, as in New York City. So he left his mark on Green Bay. <laughs> and I don't know if they ever sent him a bill for that. Maybe he could take it out of the contract if whatever deal he signs, right? Because he owes them for that wall, right? Yeah, it's, it's, like I said, you have to get used to to catching the ball and then claiming. And I used to get upset with Mike. We might be going to San Diego or we might be going to somewhere where it's warm. And Mike got us practicing outside in 20 degrees. And I'm like, Mike, we got a bubble. Let's go inside the bubble. <laughs> but for whatever reason, and so I get it. It's cold in New York. But, Skip, the cold that he was going to experience in Green Bay, that's why everybody says, Aaron Rodgers talked about it, Skip. I sure would like to get somebody up here in Janu late January. I'd like to get somebody. And he got him up there. He didn't, he didn't take care of business like he should have, especially Tampa. Because yep. normally what happens, Skip, when warm weather teams go to cold weather? They normally catch the L because yep. they either practice indoors or they have the the warm weather. You get the San Diego, you get the uh, San Diego. You used to get the Chargers yep. or you get the Dolphins, and you wanted to get them to every time they had to go to Buffalo to get the brakes beat off them. Mm. You remember when the Chargers skip when they went to Cincinnati I I? and oh. it was minus fifty seven, it was yep. minus fifty seven below, yep. and they were just like, uh, "Get us out of here." So I just think Skip now with Odell going through what he's gone through, Skip it. it <laughs> Just twice now, a team has said, you know what, we're better off without you. That does something to a man's psyche. That does something to you mentally. I think Odell is mentally strong. I think he'll bounce back from this. I'm glad he's taking his time and he's just not rushing into a situation, trying to, I, well, I'm going to get somewhere and just show him. Take your time because this is where you're going to spend the next three, next two and a half, if you're lucky, the next three months of your football career in 2021 leading into 2022. And hopefully it goes according to plan. So take your time. Don't be in a rush. Don't do something uh, uh, foolhardily just to say, well, I'm going to show the Browns. You don't need to prove anything to the Browns. You need to prove to yourself that you're still that dude. And in the process of proving that you're still that dude, you will prove those guys wrong. And yep. a lot of other people that don't believe you still have it. So can you see, after everything we just talked about, especially the bitter cold up in Green Bay, why <laughs> Odell's not exactly chomping at the bit to sign a deal to go play with Aaron and Devontae, right? Because yes. it left a real cold, bad taste in his mouth, that one playoff game. And it's real, real cold. I mean, think about it, Skip. It's cold every day. It's not like, Skip, I mean, he just practiced in that. I mean, he just had to play in that. Imagine practicing in that every day. Yep. That's what I tell people. That, that cold, that cold. Give me the heat any day. I don't care. It can't get hot enough. Mm. Because it's not like I can go out there with a fur coat and try to play football. Yep. I can take off enough clothes. I can take off enough clothes and be cool enough. Mm. I can't put on enough clothes to be warm enough up in Green Bay, Wisconsin. Yeah, although it didn't bother the Tampa receivers in the NFC Championship game one bit.
No, I, right. I, you remember, Tampa also went to Philly, mm -hmm. and they beat Philly in the NFC Championship game. But no more times than not, Skip, what we tried to do, we tried to get, we wanted warm weather teams. We wanted you to come to Denver in January and see what you're about. Sure. Yeah, I know what you do when it's 80 degrees. Everybody can catch the ball when it's 80 degrees. But mm -hmm. can you catch it when it's 10, uh, when that wind's blowing? Uh, Jacksonville did okay at Denver. And won yeah, Skip, it was warm. It was warm. It it was warm. It was like 45 <laughs> degrees. It wasn't like it was supposed to be. Mm. I mean, the weatherman lied to us. <laughs> lied. <laughs> yeah. Lied. Oh, boy. You know what? The Dak <laughs> Prescott and uh, the Cowboys, they're really, they need to get back on track, guys. They want to get back to their winning ways when they face the Falcons at home. And Dallas is coming off that blowout loss to Shannon's Broncos, which we know. Mm -hmm. And now... Up to regain momentum before they enter a tough stretch in the second half of their schedule. So, Shannon, how crucial is this game for the Cowboys? It's not crucial. They got a three-game lead. They got a four. They got a three and a half, four-game lead in the loss column. This is not a crucial game. They're in the NFC East. They get the wet. They're in the worst division in all of football, and they they happen to be the best team. That's not saying much. That's not saying much. But that's what we are where we are. They got the Giants. They got the Washington football team. They got the Eagles. Skip Bayless, I'm not going to let you try to sell this. I'm not going to let you try to build this. Oh, this is a must win. And if they beat the, if they beat the Falcons, they're on their way. They're right back on track. You're playing a 4-4 four and four football team. That their best win thus far, they did beat an outstanding Saints team. I believe the Saints is really good, especially defensively. But you did beat Trevor. Oh, did you know Matty Ice did something that a uh, old goat couldn't do? He beat Trevor Simeon. Yeah, old Trev. That's what they call him, Joe Trev. They call him Trev. Mm. But you think you're slick, Skip. You're trying to build this up. I, I haven't you're even to... spoken yet. Yeah, no, I, but I, I know. I know. You. You've been building this. You've been building this for a whole week since Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday. Yeah, oh, the Falcons. Be, because you... you've been building it down all week, right? No, but what I'm trying to do, what I'm doing is saying, okay, if they lose this game, they're still going to have a two-game lead. They're playing in the worst division in football. You make it seem like the Falcons. Now, if, if, if your team was playing the Rams and you beat the Rams, I'm like, ooh, Skip, y'all owned something. Y'all beat the Cardinals. I'm like, ooh, Skip, y'all owned something. Y'all beat Green Bay or beat the Bucks. I'm like, ooh, Skip, if y'all beat the Ravens, I'm like, Skip, yeah, man, y'all y'all on y'all way. Bro, the Falcons, really? Is that what you want me to get up, sit up here and get excited about? Yes. That you could possibly beat the Falcons? Yes. No. All I know, what happened last week? You were supposed to beat the kid. You were supposed to beat the Broncos. Yeah. That's what you told me. We got Dak back. Dak is back. Mm -hmm. They should have went with Cooper Rush. They got a controversy brewing in Dallas. Maybe. I ain't going to say nothing about it just yet. Yeah. But it's going to come. Okay. I don't know which side of mouth you're speaking out of right now because I have had to sit across from you all week <laughs> suffering your ridicule over what my Cowboys did not do this past Sunday. They, Thank you. they laid a golden goose of an egg. Yeah, you did. They were down 30 to nothing in the fourth quarter at home to Teddy Bridgewater. They were a 10-point favorite, and they trailed 30 to nothing. And I'll be the first to admit I still haven't gotten over it because I didn't see that coming. Good. I was thunderstruck. I was blindsided. I was knocked silly by it, and I still haven't quite recovered, but I still believe in my football team. And yet, you said my football team got exposed by Vic Fangio <laughs> and the Orange Denver Crush, or whatever you call them now. I don't know what they are, but they, they are allowing the second fewest points in the league on defense. And because you told me my team got exposed, I'm not sure what you're trying to tell me. If they're exposed, then, then you should also say this is a crucial game because no. you're teetering right now. And if you lose two straight home games, you're going to be in big trouble because the league has figured you out. Skip, right? I, I, I would agree with you. If you didn't have such a, a commanding lead, I didn't say, all I said was, is Denver, I said, is that what you tried to tell me and others like you and some other people were saying that the Cowboys defense was better than what they showed statistically. And I said, no, they're not. I said, they're exactly what they are statistically. Okay. And they proved that proved right. to be true. So, but your offense, your offense just had a bad game. That's all I said. Your offense had a bad game. Okay, so help me out. Conclusion from you before I launch on you. Okay. You are predicting what this Sunday at Jerry World? I'm, a predict I'm predicting your Cowboys cover. 
You are? I am. Against an Atlanta Falcons team featuring Matt Ryan, former MVP, that just won at New Orleans? Yeah. Cover? Yeah. Well, then you're telling me that last Sunday wasn't getting exposed. It was just an aberration. It was just a blip. It was just but, a bad day at the office, right? Well, well, but here's the thing. Your offense gets to go against the Falcons' defense. There's a difference between the Cowboys' offense going against the Broncos' defense. As you said, they're a very stingy unit. They're second in points allowed. They're in the top ten in yards allowed. Now you're going against a team that's in the bottom fourth as far as points allowed, yards allowed, passing yards allowed. So it's a whole different ball game. So now your offense gets to go out there and do what it normally does against a subpar defense. Now, do I think your def do I think your defense is anything spectacular? No. And I said that. But in the process, I don't think the Falcons offense, Skip, they're without, they're without Ridley. Their best receiver is not even there. Zacchaeus did that. Gage did that. Kyle Pitts did that. Well, what about so Kyle I, Pitts? What did we say before the draft? I oh, said he's special. all-time freak. Yes, he's special. Yes, yes. I'm not denying that. Okay, so Ivan went so far as to tell you if somehow he fell to Dallas or Dallas wanted to trade up for Kyle Pitts, even though we have Amari and CD and Gallup's going to be back this Sunday, I would take Kyle Pitts. That's how special he is, and he's just starting to get a hold of it. And I here think he you comes. like what you got. Okay, well, you, you told me my defense got exposed. It's average at best. I think you think yes. it's below average. Yes, okay? yes, so yes. So what yes. do you think Matt Ryan and Kyle Pitts are going to do to my defense? How many points? are they going to score 30 well, well let me ask you this is your offense how poorly is your offense going to play because if your offense is going to play like they played last week well yeah atlanta can go in there and beat you because you had the perfect storm skip you have a defense that's average to slightly below average and your offense which has been exceptional up until this that point all of a sudden was going three and out and they could never get on so what did you do you kept putting the worst unit of your team on the field well if you keep doing that you're asking for trouble what you guys normally do what's what skip you run the football you possess the ball, you possess time of possession, so now you minimize the weak link of your team, which is your defense being out there to play. Well, the Broncos kept them out there for 41 minutes. Well, if you keep the weakest part of your team on the field for 41 minutes, what do you think is going to happen? What happened? 30 to nothing at one point in time. Okay. I believe that my quarterback had the worst day he's had as a Dallas Cowboy, but I believe it was a one-off, a one and only. I don't know why. I don't know if it was the rust of being off for three weeks without any football. I don't know if he was a little gun shy on his healing calf muscle. I, I don't know, but what he he just had a bad day. He just woke up on the wrong side of the bed for whatever reason, and okay. he got off cold, and he stayed cold until the end of the game when I was happy that Mike McCarthy left him in just to get a little bit of rhythm back, a little bit of confidence, because he had hit bottom in this game. But whoa, I believe whoa, whoa, he's going to— well, hold on. How you tell me I'm talking out of the, uh, both sides of my mouth when you just said your quarterback had the worst game of his career and you believe he's going to bounce back, but you want me to say, oh, the Falcons are about to blow the doors off the Cowboys. You just said that. You said you believe that was an aberration of last week. Okay. You don't believe he's going to play like that again. Okay. So why would you want me to pick the Falcons when you believe Dak's going to play like Dak's played up until that point? This Sunday, but you want me to take the Falcons and talk about, oh, this game's going to be tough for the Cowboys. Because you've been gloating all week about how bad okay. my Cowboys were and are. So you should have the courage of your convictions, <laughs> have no. some guts, and say at least that Atlanta's going to cover. Because I'm going to remind no. you, the Falcons are coming with revenge on minds. Because game two last year, they were ahead 20 to nothing in the first quarter because my team lost three fumbles. They were ahead 29 to 10 at halftime they were ahead 39 to 24 with four minutes left in the game and they blew it and because yes. of a watermelon onside kick at the end of the game and then a mm -hmm. late pass to cd lamb my stud rookie they lost 40 to 39 you don't think they're spoiling to get even with the cowboys and maybe to get even with the new cowboys defensive coordinator who used to be their head coach yeah. right yes skip i get i get that but here's the thing you said you don't believe Dak in this offense is going to play this week like they played last week. I do not. I did, 
I did not say the Cowboys' offense was overrated. I said I believe their defense is average to below average. And when your offense plays like it did last week, it puts the worst unit of your team on the field for an extended period of time. So the thing is that what they were doing, Skip, they was possessing the football, the Cowboys, and now when the defense get on the field, they're fresh. Okay. I'm going to tell you, I'm going to explain to you, I'm going to convince you why this (laughs) game is the turning point of the season for my team. It is crucial in the grand scheme of things because I thought this team could go 12 and 5 and then I upped it to 13 and 4. I thought this team going into the Denver game was a serious contender to win the NFC, to get to the Super Bowl. Man, and stop. I still trust my team, but I certainly don't trust it as much as I did a week ago today when I made my prediction about the Denver Broncos game because they let me down. They shocked me. They did something I didn't think they were capable of. They folded right before my very eyes, and they were not competitive all day long against a team they were favored to beat by 10 points. So my point to you is you have back-to-back must win home games because they're gimme home games if we're talking about contender or are we talking about just pretender because if you're talking talking about about the lead they have in the NFC least baloney I don't want to hear it anymore because it's a garbage division that they can back into winning thank you but thank you okay but if we're talking about getting back on track and being a legit threat to win the NFC, they have to win this game. If they lose back-to-back gimme home games, I'm out, man. I, I've only got the lease to hang on to for dear life. Because exactly. I'm going to remind you, after these two home games, they have to go to Kansas City. They have to go to New Orleans. Uh, dicey, dicey. They have three road games left in the division. They've played nobody on the road in the division. They have to go to Washington, they have to go to New York, and they have to finish at Philadelphia. Scary, scary, scary. They're division games, as you know, rivalries, anything can happen. And each of those teams seems to get a little bit better each week. And in the end, my last two home games, uh, a little scary because you got Raiders on Thanksgiving. I think I can win that game. But guess who the last home game is, is against? We got revenge on our mind, but it's the Arizona Cardinals that most people think are the best team in the NFC as we speak. They certainly have the best record. Right. So I just detailed to you why you better win this game or you are getting in trouble. I'm not even sure the NFC least lead would be safe if you lose this game because of those three remaining games on the road and you still get to play Washington at home and I would think you could win that game. Well, first of all, I never thought you were serious contenders anyway. Well, Second I of did. All, and so yeah, did most did. of the world except cowboy haters Shannon Sharp. And, 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 and guess what? So in other words, in order for you to be contenders and to get to where you think you could possibly go, you're going to have to beat Bucks, Packers, Cards, Rams. You're going to have to oh, beat two of those. A week ago, I would have said doable, 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 doable. Not doable, not yes. doable, not doable. Yeah. And you would think it was doable because you have lost so much DEW to me <laughs> thanks to my Dallas Cowboys. Yes. You've been beating, Skip, you've been beating up on bad teams. Mm. You beat bad teams. Now, all of a sudden, you get a somewhat deep. And, and, and the Falcons, you, you make it seem like the Falcons are six and two. They're four and four. Okay. They're not five and three. They're not seven and one. Okay, you better beat them. They're 500 beat ball club. You better beat them because if you don't, and, and I would I be shocked if Atlanta won? I would not be shocked. They just beat New Orleans at New Orleans. You just feel you feel a little down no. because you thought you you thought your team was gonna run over my team and it didn't happen. Okay, I, I'm gonna sum this up for you. This is why I believe my quarterback had a bad day. If I can show you first of all the two huge drops in this game that would have changed the game, it could have really impacted what became 30 to nothing. Could I see the first drop in this game featuring Tony Pollard? This was 11:09 left early in the game at second and seven at the Dallas 45. He, he's going to run aways with this. He, he's, Man, he, look at, 
Okay. Skip, you don't got you don't got good hands. I okay. mean, you see how he tried and, to catch the ball. There's, there's to Amari. Both of those plays were wide open. I'm going to run for 30 yards kind of plays, and Dak did make those two throws. So you got to give him those two, right? Yeah. Okay. So then we got bad Dak because we got the first fourth and two at the 20, and I don't know what got into Dak, but he had a bad day because he missed Cedric Wilson for even you said this looks like a touchdown to me, right? Yeah. If he could beat the one man, I, I think he's gone. He's gonna run for thirty or forty yards, right? And yeah. he just he's gonna get a touchdown. Okay. Yeah, he don't need he don't need he don't need but eighteen yards for a touchdown. He's gonna turn that up and get in the end zone. Okay. Now let's see right after that play, by the way, one uh, the right after the Amari drop was the deep ball to CeeDee Lamb. Can we see that? And and this is just it's gone for a touchdown. If he catches that, if if Dak makes this throw, if he throws it one yard shorter. It's going to turn the game completely around. And, and then we've got the, the final fourth down play where they went for it out of desperation, obviously, and CD uncovers, and, and Dak rolls right and just flat out airmails him. Dak makes that throw in his sleep. That's gone for maybe a touchdown. If you give me any of the five plays I just showed you, two drops and three misfires by Dak Prescott, I don't know but what we might win the game because they're all huge Not plays. Nothing. Yeah. Well, Skip, that happened. I can go back in every game. Every team can go back and look at three or four plays, and that's what they normally do. Yeah. My team made the plays. Your team did. Yeah. Okay. Then, now then, you get the then your coach took credit for those plays, as if he had something he to should. do with those misses. He fires. did. He had nothing did he to not do. Diagram, did he diagram the defense that stifled, that suffocated, that made Dak eat empty calories? Yes, he did. <laughs> yeah. Did he diagram oh. those defenses that were about to okay. get scorched? What about that? What about the offense that ran rough shot over your Cowboys? Mm. What about that? Let's talk about that. Okay, you went. You you showed me some offensive plays that you guys could have made. Now show the yeah. defense and how Javon, uh, uh, Jay Williams and Melvin Gorm was running through you. It's called show over that. overconfidence. That's what happened. Overconfidence. They got nothing to do with us. What yeah. they got to do with us? It's we showed up, beat the brakes off your left. We're about to show up and run rough shot over the Falcons. I, I'm going to say it's 37 to 28. That's my score. 37 mm. to 28. Okay. Them boots made for walking. Yeah. That's what Jessica Simpson said. These boots were made for walking. Walked all over y'all. Uh, I right. think that was Nancy Sinatra, actually, but go ahead. <laughs> no mercy. To the Lakers right now, guys. They did win their second straight overtime game last night, beating the Heat 121-17. Jimmy Butler left the game with a sprained ankle, and Russell Westbrook took advantage, finishing with a triple-double and leading the team in scoring with 25 points. Shannon, give Westbrook a letter grade for his performance, please. Skip, I gave him a B minus. And um, because I think the thing is, he's very, very frustrating. Um, and you have to, I basically what I'm starting to learn, and I'm, you know, this is the first time that he's actually been on a team that I actually root for, is that I'm learning to accept the good with the bad. Knowing that he's gonna do some really good things, but he's gonna make some really, really boneheaded plays. And you're just gonna have to be accepting of that, Skip. Because I look at it, you know, the two big shots down the stretch was, was as big a shots that he's made in his, in, since he's been in this uniform. But then I look at the, the, the getting, jumping in the air under the basket with no one to pass the ball to, nowhere to go with the basketball, turning it over in that situation, throwing the ball off. He's standing right next to AD. He throws the ball off his head, and he turns the ball over. Taking a bad three at the end of regulation when you got Car Carmelo standing right there at the top of the key, and I'm definitely going to trust Carmelo in that situation more than I'm going to trust Russ. Yeah. But as I said, Skip, the 25 points, the what? The 14, the 14 assists, the 12, uh, uh, the 12 rebounds. That's undeniable. <laughs> but he also had eight turnovers in that situation. Mm. So maybe the, the game would not have not even been this close had Russ done a better job of taking care of the basketball. Yep. So I gave him a B minus, knowing now after watching him, I've seen enough to know. Shannon, don't get your blood pressure up. <laughs> this is who Russ is. Russ is going to make some plays. You're like, wow, that was good, Russ. And Russ is going to make some plays. You're like, damn, real, Russ, what the hell are you thinking? And so that's where I am, Skip. I gave him a B minus. But I got to take something positive. I got to get some positive out of this. So I thought he played I thought he played well when he needed to play well, which was in the fourth quarter. But, man, the turnover, Skip. And, and a lot of these turnovers are just, like, unnecessary <laughs> because they're so casual. The guy's standing right there in front of him, and he throws the ball trying to get it to A.D., and the guy just sticks his hands up and just takes it out there. I'm like, Russ, really? You're not going to fake it up and then bounce it? 
But that's what I gave him, Skip. Shannon Sharp, Russell Westbrook, now your point guard of your Los Angeles Lakers, <laughs> the Kings Los Angeles Lakers, that Russ is going to take a couple of years off your life because he's he going to he cause is, you yeah. a lot of sleepless nights. He's going to cause you a lot of <laughs> angst and soul searching, <laughs> gnashing of teeth. He's going to force you to come in here a number of mornings going forward this year <laughs> and hang your head and say, I just don't know what to do with him because nobody knows what to do with him because he is simply the greatest, awfulest player any of us have ever seen <laughs> because it is great, awful, great, awful. But in the end, he's a solo act of a stat machine and it's all time great on both counts. Solo act, stat machine, he is a cinch first ballot Hall of Famer because he has averaged triple doubles for the last five years. And I'm not going to be surprised if he pulls it off again this year because he's already up to 19 points a game, nine rebounds and nine assists. Yes. And if I just read you the numbers just off the top of my head, off this box uh -huh. score, you would say, man, he did that 25, 12 and 14. But then there's another category called turnovers, and it went to eight. Eight? He is running away with the NBA lead in turnovers because he's now all the way up to 64. He and James Harden have played the same, 12 games each. Russ has 64, and in second place in turnovers is James Harden with 56. He leads by eight turnovers through 12 games. Five a game. That's horrendously bad. It's over five a game. So when I'm trying to give him a grade, if, if I start with floor generalship, with orchestrating, with quarterbacking, I, I, I'm like an F plus. I might give him a plus because he did have the, the high number of assists. Right. But, but all the rest of it and the clutch shot making and, and just how hard he plays and getting that many rebounds – I, I would give him an A minus for that part of his basketball game. And so I'm trying to average it out to a C plus. <laughs> he, he's hard to live with. He's hard to win with. He's hard to overcome. But he does so much great that in the end you sit back and say, yeah, but. He's, it's constantly, yeah, but. Right. And the buts last night happened eight times. If we could please see in order <laughs> Russ's turnovers from last night, just for those who might not have stayed up late enough to digest them. Skip Russ's turn. What? What? Russ, careful. Just careful. Uh, what was that? Skip That'd get a lot of players yanked. What, what was that? That's just wild, out of control, Russ. Russ. What? 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 Russ, come on. You're better than that. You're way better than that. But again, leaving his feet. Leave your feet up in the air See, without that, a plan. That's the one he hit AD inside the head right with. In the head. <laughs> God. What, what are you doing, Russ? Russ, th this is overtime. That's the other overtime turn. Yeah, because he two. And that was the worst one of all. And it was the right. last one. And it kept Miami afloat in overtime and m gave me pause because I thought the Heat are going to steal this game because Westbrook has gone Westbrook with his passing. He, he is now the, the president of the Bricklayers Union here in Los <laughs> Angeles. And, and it, it also trickles into turnovers because he has brick turnovers. I, I don't yeah. know what possesses yeah. him. Yeah, he might be the greatest brick mason of all time. He is the greatest but Skip, of all time. It, 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 but here's the thing. You say it's frustrating for me. How frustrating do you think it is as a player on the court with him? It's kind of like playing with Tony Romo. I, I guess you can imagine, and now he's a better player than Tony Romo, but Skip, you yeah. know Tony Romo can do things great, but you know you just hold, you, you're holding, you know. you, you're gritting your teeth, you're holding on by the seat of your pants that, is he going to turn, is this the play that he turns it over? Yep. Is this the play that he fumbles? Is this the play that he throws the pick? And that's how it is with Russ. I'm looking at him, I mean, one more, like my grandfather used to tell me at my brother, boy, y'all good and terrible. Because we would do yeah, something good, and then we turn around and do something yeah. do, and do something bad. He said, "Boy, y'all good and terrible." Right. So for me, and that and that's that's Russ. He he'll do something. You're like, well, okay, Russ done figured it out. But he starts skip in the first quarter. Oh, he gonna give you he gonna give you at least two turnovers yeah. right off the rip to let he you will. know that he's still Russ, and I'm gonna turn this ball over. But the turnovers that he's getting, Skip, they're so. I mean. 
you would think a professional, a pro at his level, yep. wouldn't do the jump no. up in the air no. under the basket, the jump up in the air in the corner, and like, where you going? You don't leave your feet without shooting the basketball or knowing where you're gonna go. He jumps up and then has no idea. He's like, I figured out once I'm up here. Uh, I'm losing well, I, track. I, what, what year are we in now? Is this 12th or 13th year for nah, Russ? No, Russ got to be. Russ got to be in year like four, thir 14, 14. 13, 14, whatever. Yeah. No one has ever held him accountable for these turnovers because he has always covered them up with high with assists. Doubles. Yeah, with triple doubles. That's with triple correct. doubles. Yeah. Okay. So, could we now see? The shots that he missed last night, because he did miss 12 shots, if we could see those in, in order, because he made a lot of good ones and he made a couple of clutch ones. But let's see what started happening to the West Bricking. What, what is that? That's like a right-handed layup that he missed. Missed a tip shot there. Missed another drive I, I, shot. I don't missed count. a dunk. Yep. I don't, I don't, I don't count the little tip. But on this. that one, wide open from the corner, I said, there's no way on that. Uh, he tried the bank and it wasn't open. A uh, little turnaround, and that's an air ball. What? That was air ball. Yeah, nothing but air. And there's another jumper that looked good when he went up, and then it's back iron, and then it's a left hand. He's left-handed by birth, and he missed that, and that's a wide-open dare you three from the top. He was trying to bank that another was bank, And that was nothing but glass. That hit nothing but glass. And then bang, bang. And as, as we showed before, we might as well show it one more time. How about the bank three at the end of the third quarter? <laughs> Th this one he got away with. This should have been his 13th miss, his lucky 13th miss. And he nearly broke the backboard with that one because he rattled it in off the glass. Okay, so now let's show the two clutch shots in the last minute of regulation because he took my breath away. That's why he's must-see TV, can't look away. <laughs> Here he is. Bam just dares him to shoot a jumper, and he ripped it. Yeah, wow. and I don't blame Bam. Russ? I was shocked. And then he takes P.J. into the paint and shoots a fadeaway, LeBron-esque, Jordan-esque fadeaway, and made it. The jumper, yes. and that was nothing but net. And then... The fadeaway on a really tough defender, and he, he, he really took him to the cleaners on that one. And yeah. those two shots gave them the lead and gave them the lead. Okay, now let's look at the final sequence of regulation. 23.5 seconds left. <laughs> and, and let's see what Russ does with the basketball. Did he pass the basketball? Did he give it up? It's the final sequence. The game is You know tied. good and well Russ was Did not going to pass this ball. First Monk goes, and then Mello goes, and Mello really wants this basketball. He is begging for the basketball with his hands up. Russ, I'm hot. I'm 64% at home from three, and Russ says, nah, I got this. Uh -uh. Do you? No, you don't. Nope. So for me, Shannon, I was a huge fan of the Showtime Lakers through the 80s. I covered <laughs> many of those games at the Fabulous uh -huh. Forum, and this team is even more exciting to watch than that team for all the wrong reasons because <laughs> I can't look away because I don't, it's almost like you rubberneck these games because you don't know what crash is about to happen featuring Westbrook. Yeah, that, that, but that's the thing though, Skip, is that the turn, this game, first of all, if they don't shoot like they shot from yep. the three, they go 18 of 38. Yep. They go 40% from, 50% from the floor. You turn the ball over 22 times, Skip. You go 10 of 16, whether your opponent goes 20, 27 of 35, they, ma they made 11 more free throws than you attempted. <laughs> Forget, they made 11 more than you attempted. That's normally a recipe for disaster. Yep. And somehow, the Heat played just bad enough down the stretch to allow the Lakers to stay connected just long enough and to win this ball game. Because they're looking at this like, guys, we had we forced 11 turnovers and we lost this ball game. Mm. Duncan Robinson missed some easy shots. He did. He missed a three that was that was like, and then he he running coming off a pick. He did falling out of bounds. Yep. He makes that one. Yep. Tyler Hero couldn't miss from the first quarter to the third quarter, and then down the stretch, he Went couldn't cold. buy one. Nope. Okay. So that that was really the difference. But, Skip, you just got to, you know what? You just got to take it what it is. This is Russ. Russ, I, you know, you're like, well, with LeBron, Skip, this is him. 
This is Russ, and you're going to get the high turnovers. He's going to be a low efficient. Skip, he ain't shooting no 50% from the field. <laughs> I mean, why we think we going to... Why do we think a guy in year 14, 15 yeah. going to shoot 50% from the field when he's never shot 50% from the field? He's at, at 40, least we can say 41.6 right now. At least we can say, well, LeBron and KD, they've always shot 50, high they 40, do. 50% from the floor. Yeah. So them shooting 50, a guy that's been in the mid 40s to low 40s for his career, somehow we think he's going to become more efficient when he takes the exact same shots that caused him to be less than 45% from the field. Yep. And it's caused him to be less than 30% from the three. So how, if he's taking the exact same shots, he's the exact same player, do we think his efficiency is going to go up? His decision making is going to go up. His turnover rate is going to come down. So Skip, we, I'm done. I, you know what? It's me. It's my fault. It's my fault to think that Russ is going to be something other than Russell Westbrook because he's not. Okay. So my final takeaway from last night, you were very fortunate because obviously <laughs> you were without LeBron, but they were without their leading scorer and their clutch take-it-home scorer, Jimmy Butler, Correct. for the last three quarters. And that meant that still on the floor for you were four future Hall of Famers, including a current top five player in Anthony Davis. And obviously Carmelo has been the hottest shooter in pro basketball, especially coming off the bench. Right. And obviously you, you still have Russ out there and Dwight went in and wreaked havoc and fouled out as he usually does, but, but he's still a force coming off the bench. Well, you would think with four future Hall of Famers to no future Hall of Famers, that you should win that game fairly easily, and it still goes down to Tyler Hero with two threes, one to win the game, and one to tie the game at the end of the game in overtime. Yeah, and it took us two bank. It took us a bank three by Russ, a bank three by Avery Bradley. Yep. <laughs> it did. And the thing, Skip, if you watch, did you, when you watch Russell shoot that bank three, he held a pose. <laughs> he held it like that thing was pure, like it was stout. No conscience. <laughs> you, no you, shame. You bank the twenty. You bank the twenty-seven footer. Yep. Why skip? Why he shoots this ball and he holds it? Yep. <laughs> he did. Nearly broke the backboard. Way to go, Russ. No mercy. Cam Newton could be heading back to Carolina. The Panthers are reportedly set to meet with the thirty-two-year-old free agent today after news emerged that Sam Darnold has a fractured shoulder blade. Newton won an MVP with Carolina, but hasn't been on an NFL roster since being released by the Patriots in August. So, Shannon, can you see the Panthers signing Cam and he goes back to Carolina? I can because Matt Rule said he'd do anything. He needs a quarterback. And I personally think, Skip, uh, Cam probably should have never left. That wasn't his choosing. I get it, Skip. You get a new structural organization, your new head coach, general manager, all that comes in, and you want to clear the deck. Cam was the face of the franchise. He's the dominating voice. And the coach coming in says, I want to be the dominating voice. So they move on for Cam. I get that. But I still thought Cam should have stayed in Carolina. But that wasn't his choosing. But I do believe this could be, a, you know, dark to say there's no place like home. But I believe Cam Newton can go back home again. Because I believe he's better than P.J. Walker, who's been, been all around the world. And it's the same song. Uh, Matt Barkley, uh, Skip, he's not going to win anything for you. And right now, it's not like the Carolinas are just totally out of this thing. So I believe Cam can come in here and can play well for them and help them. And I'm not saying, Skip, they're going to make the playoffs if Cam comes back. But I believe Cam is better than Matt Barkley. I believe Cam is better than Walker. And I believe he will present and give them a better opportunity to win than the guys they ha currently have on the roster or anybody they can go outside other than Cam and bring in. I believe Cam is their best viable option at the QB position at this time. Mm. Okay, I preface my remarks about this possibility by telling you that when I was at Vanderbilt University, I stutter, excuse me, studied one of the great authors, Thomas Wolfe, who wrote a book called You Can't Go Home Again. <laughs> it was a classic, and he's from North Carolina, was Thomas Wolfe from Asheville. So this just rang a bell for me, You Can't Go Home Again. You can, I did. You did. That's true. <laughs> you, you went back to Denver. Is that what you're talking about? I did, I did, I did Skip, for okay. two years. It's never quite the same the second time around. Am I right about that? Well, we didn't, we didn't go to the Super Bowl, no. but I had fun. I mean, it was, it, it, was, it was a great experience for me, and it's where I wanted to be. And I think Cam, I think, Skip, I, I think the thing is, Cam Hart is still in Carolina. 
It's tough. I agree. You, you, you. He, he, he built that French. I mean, he, he did. He, he's one of the two or three best players in that. For you know, him, Steve Smith, Luke Keekley. When you think of Carolina, you think of Cam Newton. You do, and I believe that Cam is still in the hearts of many of those fans. Yeah, and. I am still a huge fan of Cam's. In fact, I have campaigned on this show for Cam to go to Dallas as my backup quarterback. Jerry said no to that. Jerry right. stuck with the homegrown Cooper Rush, and <laughs> it paid I give off. It, for up. Him. it paid it off. It paid off for him. It's, he's now Cooper Mount Rushmore. <laughs> <laughs> so the the point is. This surprised me only because Matt Rule is probably not a Cam fan, not that he doesn't like him, but I know that Matt Rule, obviously he didn't coach Cam, but, but he did coach P.J. Walker at Temple, and he is a right. huge fan of P.J.'s, and I watched his media session yesterday, Matt Rule's, and he was raving about P.J. Walker, saying, y y you people don't really understand, everybody wanted him. It was very competitive to sign him out of the XFL. And I watched a couple of his games. He was electric in the, uh, albeit in the XFL. But yeah, but there's a reason why he was playing in the XFL. Th there was a reason, and I agree with you. But I believe that Matt Rule wanted to go forward and see what he's got, see if he could take it up to this level and be as successful as he was for Matt at Temple and then in the XFL. So then it dawned on me, d does he want Cam to be a little bit of a big brother, a mentor? Um, you know, somebody to guide PJ a little bit. I, I don't know which way. If, if you sign Cam, it seems like you almost have to play Cam immediately, right? You, you can't well, ask Cam to be a backup. Well, I don't know if they play him immediately, Skip. I think you would have to give him at least a week to get up on the get up on the playbook. I mean, you can't. I mean, the, the days of Skip are being just basic, where we just okay, we're going to run a handful of plays. The defenses are too good. You can't do that anymore. And I think that's the thing, Skip. That's one of the reasons why you know you saw uh, uh, the Cowboys. They went with Cooper Rush. Team to give the guy an opportunity to you know to see what he can do, as opposed to just automatically break. Skip, that's not a running back. That's not a receiver or defensive lineman. Skip, we've seen guys come in midseason or a guy come up off his couch and go play. You're not doing that at the quarterback position, Skip. It's just too complicated of a position. There's too many moving parts. There's too many variables that a quarterback can get up off his couch and then come in and play. And it's play at a high level. So maybe Walker starts this week. Maybe. And Cam yeah. gets an opportunity to get the terminology in maybe a week or two. But after that, I think Cam is going to be in there because I think Matt Rule believes that they got an opportunity to make the playoffs. Well, it would do my heart good to see Cam get this opportunity a second time around there. It, it won't be exactly the way it used to be in the glory no. days of the Super right. Bowl days. But, but still... I did first guess this. Even before Sam Darnold was drafted, I told you he's not that guy. You liked him. I didn't. And now he's hurt, unfortunately, for him. But I just, I thought it was a bad idea to go after Sam Darnold to try to right the ship in Carolina. I, I just don't believe in him. And so it's time to move forward from Sam Darnold. And, right. you know, Cam might have, I, I don't know. I wouldn't shock me if he had two or three really good years left in him. Because he had, yeah. he was on his way to having a really good year in New England last year before he got COVID. Right. And I, I think the thing, Skip, I, it all depends on how the season plays out. If yep. Cam were to, and I agree with you, if Cam gets on the roster. But I think the thing is, they're going to probably be looking for a quarterback. Um, um, I, I think that's the direction because their defense is, is, is good. It's just their offense leaves them on the field entirely too long. They play too many snaps and they start to wear down. But if they had an offense that could, you know, I mean, Christian McCaffrey came back last week. He, he is what he is. He can run the football. He can catch the football. I like DJ Moore. I like Trimble, the tight end. They got some nice. Uh, Robbie Anderson is, is a nice Agreed. tight, a nice wide receiver. Agreed. They have some nice pieces. They do. But the quarterback position, they're deficient at the one position that you can't be deficient because you can't hide him. Yeah. Skip, if I got a bad quarterback top, I can protect him. If I got a bad offensive lineman, I can slide protection, I can chip, I can protect him. How the hell do I protect the quarterback when he has the ball in his hand on every single snap? I can't protect him. I can't run it 60 times. I can't check it down and just run screen passes. I'm going to have to let him throw the football so I can't protect him. And right now, they have a quarterback and, 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 and Sam Darnold who got up to a great start and then all of a sudden he just, it, he just fell apart. 
Maybe it was Skip, maybe it was injury. Christian McCaffrey did get hurt. They were unable to run the football, so it put a lot of pressure. Sam Darnold is not a guy, Skip. He's a complimentary quarterback, which means if the off if the off running game is really going well, he can play well. But you ask him to go win you a football game consistently, that ain't happening. Nope. And unfortunately, the Carolina Panthers, two of their last three games this year are against the GOAT. <laughs> so good luck with that. Well, Cam, you know, Cam ain't, ain't lost to the GOAT. Okay. Well, Cam we'll ain't never lost to the GOAT. Yeah. Are you predicting I'm just saying. that right now? I'm just saying, Cam. Yeah. Want to get a little do on it right now? Well, Skip, let, let, let's, let's see what... If it is Cam, want to get a little do on it? Let's see what Carolina does. But okay. you know what Cam did in his building, walk-off tub, and what he did on that Monday night. You remember that Monday night in Carolina, right? It was a long time ago. Okay. Did it happen? Yeah, but the 44-year-old's okay, still going. <laughs> okay. <laughs> He's but, oh, You know what? Okay, I remember that. The next time you bring up those six those Super Bowls, yep. I'm going to say, Skip, that was a long time ago. Yeah. Those first three was a long time ago. Well, last year was not a long time ago. Well, okay, that, well, yeah. he got one Super Bowl then because all the rest <laughs> of them was a long time ago. <laughs> okay. Uh, they are desperate, no doubt about that. And it's kind of a full circle moment. If he were to go back and be the guy, I, I don't hate it. I don't hate it. Yeah. We'll see how this plays Dorothy out. Dorothy said you could go home. What did she say, Skip? <laughs> There's she no never place left home. like home. It was home. all a dream. I was waiting she, for she that. Was dreaming. No place you like never home. left, right? <laughs> no mercy. Hey, everybody. How's it going? It's Farm Morris here on USS Essex. Letting you guys know everything's going well. Deployment's going fine. Go Niners. Let's kick some butt this weekend. Hey, Mom. Hey, Hilton. Love you guys. You guys have a good one. Love that. Uh, the race, guys, for Odell Beckham Jr. is on with the Chiefs, Saints, Patriots, and Packers all still in play for the receiver. There is a lot of buzz around this decision, so much so that Skip has mentioned that OBJ has become the most hyped free agent ever. Shannon, tell Skip why he's wrong. Skip, he's not the most hype. You obviously know. You were covering the league when Reggie came out. You was covering the league when time when time was a free agent. You were you were still immersed in this when Peyton was available, when Brady became available. Skip, it just so happens that a 29-year-old receiver who had who was offensive rookie of the year, was a three-time Pro Bowl player, has become available. I don't think anybody's saying he's the savior, but I do believe that these teams believe as a second option he's better than what they currently have. That's what I do believe. And teams are looking to upgrade. And Skip, when we when we when we was looking at it, we like, they got Chris Godwin, they got, they got a uh, uh, Mike Evans, they got Gronk, they got they don't need A B. Lo and behold, A.B. became a viable <laughs> option. So I believe a, uh, uh, OBJ can be the same thing. I don't think he's overhyped. You don't believe. I think for the thing with you is that you don't believe he can play anymore. You believe he's just a guy. And I don't believe he's just <laughs> a guy. I believe with the right situation, the right head coach, the right quarterback, which Green Bay would be, which Kansas City would be, I believe OBJ can, can help a team get to where it wants to go. Okay, small clarification. I, I didn't say most hyped. I said most, as you said, overhyped. Oh, yeah. <laughs> I, I think Twitter has decided, from what I read last night and the night before, that he is somebody's savior. I think a lot of people on Twitter still believe that OBJ is still that guy who caught that pass, the greatest catch in the history of pro football against my Dallas Cowboys that fateful night back in, when was it, 2014. And he's not that guy anymore, in part because of all the injuries. And you won't acknowledge this, but if you look hard at what has happened to his body, he has been robbed of his electricity from all the injuries. And he still got can, juice, though. Okay, well, does he? Really, because I think yeah. he's now just another pretty good receiver. And I'm not even sure he's pretty good anymore because of what's happened to his body. So he had, starting in 2014, he had a hamstring tear. Then he had several back issue and injuries. Then he had an ankle fracture that required surgery in 2017. Then he had a, 
a quad injury that cost him four games in 2018. Then he had groin surgery that cost him games in 2019, put him on IR. Then last year, of course, he had the ACL rupture and surgery. And this year, he's been fighting through an AC joint sprain in his shoulder. So that means in the last four years, he's had three surgeries. Well, you know and I know that is hard on a stud receiver's body. When, when, yeah. you, when you are so dependent on your athleticism, it's robbing you every time you have surgery to a different part of your body with the trust to, to be as explosive as you used to be. Well, what keeps happening? His last four years, just look at the numbers. Decline, 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 decline. He's gone down, down, down. And three of the last four years, he's had career lows in receiving yards per game. So if we go all the way back to his rookie year, he led the NFL with 104 yards receiving game, uh, receiving yards per game, 104. Well, this year for Cleveland, it it plummeted all the way to 39 yards a game. And again, for whatever reason, he could never get on the same page with Baker Mayfield. But when he did get on the same page, if we could see what happened, the, the drops that I've shown you before, they were just so shockingly uncharacteristic of an Odell Beckham Jr. that many people thought in his first couple of years he was the best receiver in the game. That's at charges. That's a huge late play in this game on fourth down. And he dropped it. Just it, Baker hits him right in the hands for once, and he dropped it. And then we got another one against Arizona as they're trying to fight back in the game, and he just didn't want any part of that ball, and he spit it up. And then we've got the deep throw. Um, this is against Pittsburgh, obviously. This is going to win the game. And I thought it was a very yeah. good throw by Baker Mayfield. It was not. And, and Odell wanted no part of it. He put his no, hand up and shied game. away from it. My, he my, wants my no first, part of contact because he's been hurt yeah, too much. Yeah. My, 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 my first shot, when you haven't thrown me the ball, my first shot, my first catch is not going to be a kill shot. Now, you keep going back to these same two drops, but what I'm going to do, I'm going to upload, ladies and gentlemen at home, I'm going to upload the 11-minute video that OBJ's dad uploaded, mm -hmm. and I'm going to let you see all the times that OBJ was open and Baker didn't find him. Baker has, Odell has gotten... Uh, has gotten scapegoated for some of the miscues or some of the problems that's going on in Cleveland. I'm not saying OG, uh, uh, OBJ is not without blame, but you make it seem like everything. So what happened here? So why, why didn't Baker hit him right here, Skip? Mm -hmm. I, I don't know. I'm not sure he was open on that play. No, he was open on, he was open on this one. Was he open on this one? No, that was a bad throw. Yeah. Uh, okay, yeah, yeah, yeah. Well, well, yeah, he was, that was a bad. What about that one? How about keeping him bound? Well, he's double covered on that play, and so he just threw he's it double, away. What about this one right here? Yeah. Well, Odell didn't make any effort to even stop and oh, catch no, the Oh, no, I got to make it. Well, he ain't making any effort to yeah. put it on one to three. Yeah, but he's all I'm covered, saying, he's Skip, doubled is, on that play. So, look, look Harry, but let me, let me ask you this. You're saying that he's not what he once was. Not. He doesn't need to be. Mm -hmm. He doesn't need to be. He does not need to be OBJ of the New York Football Giants. He just, I just believe he just needs to be better than what he showed in Cleveland. And I believe getting with Aaron Rodgers, getting with Patrick Mahomes, getting in a very different environment. Cleveland's still Cleveland. Mm -hmm. So I believe he gets in a different environment. I believe he'll be better. Okay. I, believe, I believe he'll be surrounded by a better uh, quarterback, a better offensive mind, and a better structure. And he'll, you'll, he will reap the benefits, and a team will reap the benefits of him being in that situation. Mm, I think Kevin Stefanski is one of the top play callers in the league and has a very sound system for the first time in Baker's career after he went through four head coaches and four coordinators in four years. I think he's found some peace within this system. And again, according to the report in ESPN, there were times that Baker just, I mean, that Odell just freelanced and ran the wrong route, just ran his own route. And you can't get away with that in, in a good system with a good quarterback, which I still believe Baker is. I still believe it was more Odell's fault than Baker's fault. But we're about to find out. Right. Well, yeah, but well, see, now Odell's about to go to a system with a great quarterback, not a good quarterback, which you said Baker was. He's a good quarterback. Now he gets an opportunity to play with great quarterbacks, be it Rodgers, be it Patrick Mahomes. So, and the system, I believe the system is more conducive because – Excuse me. Both of the systems that he could possibly end up in are play are a pass first systems, not run first. Okay. That's what. Th so so obviously, in the grand scheme of things, 
Deion Sanders was not overhyped because all he did was help San Francisco win a Super Bowl in 94 and then go to Dallas and help them win the Super Bowl, put them over the top in 95. And obviously Reggie White went to, to Green Bay and put Green Bay back on, back the, on map, the map. Right? He did. And yeah. obviously Tom Brady put Tampa Bay back on the map. So he wasn't overhyped. Peyton. You know, I said he was still the GOAT and, and he proved to be. You see what you did? You just called, you just you just compared Odell. I did to 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 three of the greatest players to have ever played the game. Yep. Reggie White Reggie White was a top 100 player. Dion is a top 100 player. Tom Brady, Peyton Manning, all of those guys were top 100 players. And you just compared OBJ to the, one of those guys. Okay. Nobody said o, OBJ was that. Because of the hysteria, some of it fueled by you and you know and like Odell, but but you talk about him like he's going to change somebody's life and i don't believe he's going to do that i, I just I, no i said i believe he's better than what he's shown in cleveland i said he needs to leave cleveland so let's see how about he gets out of cleveland and we see what he can be <clears throat> i think wherever he goes <clears throat> he could have some early juice as you call it out of pure spite for what happened in Cleveland, <laughs> out of pure fear over, oh my God, I might be on my last stop. I've got to show the world I'm still Odell. But I right. think after a couple of nice games, he will revert to being just the pretty good receiver that he is now. And, and I'm being very nice to go to pretty good because well, I'm question. not sure he's even pretty good. Let me ask you a question. Do you believe Odell Beckham right now is better than Alan Lazard or Valdez Scantling? Yes, I do. Okay, do you believe he's better than Pringle or Ro Marcus Robinson or Michael Harmon in Kansas City? Do you believe he's a better receiver than those guys are right now? I'm not sure about Michael Hardman. I think he's pretty good because I, Odell can't run the way McColl McColl can still fly, and he's he's I've, obviously I've, young. I've never the one thing I know about football, and I played I played it 26 years, so for almost half my life. And before I retired, I had played 26 years. I retired at 35. I've never seen a guy score without the football. Mm. Yeah, Nicole Harmon can fly. But what, come, what happens when he comes to throwing him the football? What do he do with it? More times than not, he throw it back at Patrick Mahomes. And the one thing I tell guys, I say, look, either you're a receiver, which means you catch the ball, or you're a retriever. You pick the ball up and hand it to the official. Now, which are you? Are you a receiver or are you a retriever? Mm. Because I see a lot more retrieving from McCole Harmon, picking the ball up after he's dropping it, throwing it to the official. That's mm. what I see. And mm. I believe Odell Beckham is better than those three receivers. Outside of Kelsey, outside of Tyreek, Odell Beckham would be the third best receiver on that football team. He would be the second best receiver on that football team behind, obviously, Devontae Adams. Okay. So stop it, Skip. But you just missed the point in Kansas City. The real problem lies with the guy throwing the football. Oh, uh, there the you retriever. go. There you go. No, I'm going there because he has become a disaster. He is your guy, my homeboy. And now he's just Mahomes because he's even lost his 99 rating in Madden. He'll he get has back. fallen back to earth with a thud because he's trying to live up to his overhyping and trying to, to show everybody he can still throw no looks and, and left-handed passes and behind his back and through his yep, legs. Yep. And, he and you saw all that. Yeah, and you the saw, league has caught you, up with him. You saw all that on display Sunday. And you'll see it again. We'll, okay, they got the ratings. We'll see I tell you what, mm. when it's all said and done, we're about seven games, we're about eight games away from being home. Yeah. Let's see when it's all said and done where Kansas City is. Okay. I just saw Jordan Love in his first ever start throw for lose. 190. Lose. That's what you saw. 190. You saw him lose. And I thought you saw, saw my homeboy throw for 166. And he did you know get away with one no look at the end that iced the game. He just threw it blindly. And guess what? Look what I found. Tyreek found the football. There I you go. saw. I, I remember Tom Brady. Skip, I remember Tom Brady once threw for 505 yards and three touchdowns and lost. I also remember Just. him throwing for 141 on the touchdown and winning. Mm -hmm. So at the end of the day, my menu, you know when you come to Club Shay Shay, you only get what? You get dubs or L's. Mm. And I ain't serving nothing but the I ain't serving nothing but the L's. How the L's at Club Shay Shay? It is fitting that your restaurant only serves <laughs> losses. <laughs> Congratulations well, yeah, you, on so, that too. And the Cowboys, that Cowboys got a, got a, 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 a room all to themselves. Mm. Yeah, they were busy. Hey, okay. You must have a lot of servers. And by the way, I got to yeah. throw in one last point here. 
Um, if Odell does go back to Green Bay, he's played one playoff game in his life at oh, Green nice. Bay in which he dropped a huge third down pass. He dropped a pass in the end zone and he wound up putting a hole in the wall with his helmet as he left the game and walked up the tunnel. So that's his legacy in Green Bay. That's his playoff legacy. I say overhyped. And in the end, as I told you yesterday, I feel sorry for Odell because there's no way at this stage of his career as he's turned a beat up, broken down 29, that he can live up to any of this hype. Damn, Skip, you talking about the man like he was 75 Nova. <laughs> I mean, the man, the man 29 years of age. Three I surgeries mean, in four years. A little pressure, a little pressure. Well, he's going to make it right. Mm. He's he going back to make wall. it right. Mm. Mm. To make it right, and he remembers the hole yep. he put in the wall. That, that mm. would be yep. interesting to me. No mercy. Well, if you think about it, there's hardly much that separates the Browns and the Patriots as they get ready to face off on Sunday. Both teams are 5-4, and four, like to run the ball, and both stout defenses. It will likely come down to who can make more plays between Baker Mayfield and Mac Jones. So, Shannon, who you got, Cleveland or New England for this one? I'm taking the Patriots in this one, Skip. I like the way they've been playing the last. They won throughout the last four, had Dallas, took Dallas down to overtime and end up losing that ball game. Defense is playing really well. J.C. Jackson is guiding back to taking, play, taking, taking the football away. Matthew Judon, who has been a huge free agent signing, Skip. And Coach Belichick got this one right on defense. Uh, and he normally does that, Skip. You know, Darrell Rivas was a free agent signing. We know how that turned out for him. Stephon Gilmore, we know how that turned out for him. Well, it looks like Matthew Judon is having that kind of impact. Now, we don't know if he's going to lead these guys to a Super Bowl, but he's been unbelievable uh, since he's been there. He has nine sacks, so a huge acquisition. The thing that I like most, yeah, they're still running the football, Skip, the Patriots are, but they're allowing Mac Jones to throw the football down the field. And remember, we said we can't, you can't protect the quarterback, but you also can't baby him. If you're going to put him out there, Skip, you're going to have to let him be quarterback. You're going to let him do quarterback things. Quarterback things mean requiring him to throw the football down the field and not just nickel and dime and check down and check down this and screen past that. Let him push the ball down the field. They let him do some of that. He's getting more and more confidence. He's getting better as it progresses. And now you give me a choice. Bill Belichick, um, Baker Mayfield. Which one you think I'm taking, Skip Bayless? Mm. I give you one guess. The guy with the cutoff hoodie. The guy that eats Subway sandwiches now. So, Mr. Sharp, you still will not learn your lesson. Uh, about a week ago here on this show, we picked a game, Cleveland at Cincinnati. The world yeah, we was did. saying, here come those Bengals. How about yep. them Bengals? Yeah, who they? Who they? <laughs> yeah, who are they? Because... You predicted that the Bengals would win easily. I said no, and it was a four-and-a-half-point spread. I said, I don't even need the points. I'll oh, take Cleveland straight up. Bragging. And I took okay. them straight up, and the final score was Cleveland 41, Bengals exposed at 16. 41 to 16, and that cost you three more cases Run it back. Diet Mountain Dew. Run it back then. You so confident? Run it back. Are you betting? Run me? it back. Yeah, I dare you. Run it back if you're not scared. Hmm. So you're mm -hmm. you're saying you would wager three more cases of diet do on this game? Three more cases or get you a new alarm system if you're scared. Hmm. I, I'm not scared at all because I'm okay. picking Cleveland to win this game just the way okay. I picked Cleveland to win last game. Do so, we have a bet? Yes, we do. Okay. Three cases. Done. Okay. Done. First thing I'm going to remind you is, despite the New England Patriots winning four of their last five, guess what their home record is so far this year? One and four. You like that? I, you guess what it's bet. about to be? One and guess four. what it's about to be? It's about to be two and four. When and we come in here on Monday, it'll be two and four. Okay. You won't learn your lesson. Your favorite <laughs> website, Pro Football Focus. Oh, doesn't love the Patriot defense. I know Belichick's the guru, and he's the master, and, and he's the all-time genius. I got it. But as well as his defense has played the last couple of games, albeit at Carolina, after what we just talked about, what's left of the Panthers, uh, Pro Football Focus ranks this defense 18th in the league. Let's see, there are 32 teams, so it's not even above average. 18th. Ranked higher than the Cowboys. Yeah, rush defense is 21st, pass 
Rush is ranked 25th so far. Coverage is 10th, so they can cover. So <laughs> Baker might have a harder time. And obviously, Baker might be without the man you say is the driving force of the Browns offense. Chubb Rock, exactly. Chubb Rock, Nick Chubb has COVID, but he's also vaccinated with COVID, so he gets a chance, maybe it's a long shot chance. Long shot to pass a couple of tests and be eligible to play on right. Sunday at New England. It's a chance, but once upon a time against your Denver Broncos, second best points allowed team in football on defense, the great Nick Fangio, second only to Belichick in genius level, <laughs> is coaching go. that <laughs> night against Huh, the Cleveland Browns. And I saw this kid named Dearness Johnson come out of nowhere and just run rough shot over your Broncos in a way that my guys, Zeke exactly. and Tony Pollard, could not run. But Dearness <laughs> ran. So at least I got Dearness is still afloat. So maybe it has to be Dearness. Yeah. He had his he had his moment. That's it. Yeah. But uh, but but you know what, Skip Bayless? I love how you said that the Patriots beat them sorry, pathetic Carolina Panthers. Yep. But you came in here that same Monday after your team ran rough shot over the Carolina Panthers who was hooting and hollering. Now all of a sudden, Carolina is terrible mm. when the Patriots beat them, but they were world beaters when your team beat them. Well, that's the way it the, the, no, 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 the National that. Football League. <laughs> so all I care about is what's going to happen Sunday at Foxborough because... Not what you think. I saw another great pro football focus stat. Baker Mayfield, this is fourth level. When he gets rid of the ball in 2.5 seconds or less, every stat of his is a top five quarterback stat. I'm going to take that to my bank because the problem with Baker Mayfield, as I kept trying to explain to you, the Hall of Famer was... He's too Odell-centric. He's too Odell-conscious. Odell is freelancing on too many routes. And Baker is double-pumping, trying to wait until he comes open. And then he's throwing it to the wrong place at the wrong time with too many defenders in the neighborhood and Odell a shell of himself. The problem was more Odell problem than it was Baker problem. And the real hashtag, sh hashtag shouldn't have been free Odell. It should have been Baker freed. That's what's happened. Baker has been freed because I told you what happened last year. Knock on wood for Odell. I hated that he got hurt. ACL rupture at Cincinnati a year ago. And what happened? Baker and the Browns took off. They went eight and three. Over that stretch, Baker was graded by Pro Football Focus as the fourth best quarterback in pro football without Odell because he spread the wealth. Obviously, they but, continue to run. Obviously, they have a top offensive line. And obviously, they yeah. still have a very good defense. They're a little yeah. beat up. Greedy Williams has been beat up. Tack McKinley's been beat up. Jadavion, they're all beat up and they're all limited in practice. But I think they're going to rise and shine. I just think Cleveland is better than New England. And Cleveland will win this game 24 to 21. And I will win three more cases of diet. You will not win. Thank you very much. But see, Skip, that no, you, uh, uh, pro football focus said when Baker Mayfield gets to reel the ball in 2.5 seconds. Yep. What quarterback stat isn't good? Because if he's getting rid of the ball like that, that means the guys are open almost instantaneous. So that's not a great, that's not, a, I mean, look at Dak stats, look at Mahomes, look at Brady, look at any quarterback that's getting the ball out of his hand. That means he's getting the ball out of his hand. That means guys are open. So this is not unique to Baker Mayfield. You making it seem like except, this is something unique to him. Except for that guy you said was the best quarterback in that draft, Sam Darnold. If he gets rid of it in 2.5 seconds, I say it's going nowhere. Because well, first, he can't play. Well, he got a broken. Uh, how long now he might have been playing play with that broken shoulder yeah, blade? Well, I don't know. So he might have been. He might have been injured. The whole, that's what you've been yeah, using for Baker. Thanks for bringing that up. Baker has a cracked shoulder and a torn labrum in his left shoulder. I, I like, love I how you, yeah. you know what I noticed. Something you didn't even enough. mention that. Yep. I noticed you didn't mention that last week. Now, when they beat Cincinnati 41 to 16, yep. you didn't mention nothing about no labrum or no, no shoulder. Mm. I didn't even know he had an arm. Yep. Now, but he lose a ball game. You know he's playing, and he's over there. Ooh, oh, oh, he throws the interception. Ooh, ah. Uh. Suck it up. Man, and stop go. it. Yep. Well, it's funny. His shoulder blade, he's still shooting these commercials. <laughs> Yeah, I don't. Are you sure though? Maybe he mm -hmm. shot them all before the season. I yeah. believe he did. You know, I don't Not, know. Uh, he... Yeah, whatever. Uh -huh. he, maybe he should. They should put a freeze on him. Maybe he should say, you know what, guys, don't run these commercials because right now I'm playing terrible, He's mm. got a and great I don't want people to see me anymore. Getting these. Thank deals. you for doubting Baker Mayfield. 
Yeah. Once again. You'll be motivated by that, <laughs> yeah. just so you know. No mercy. A go debate between LeBron and Michael Jordan took a turn when Hall of Famer Kevin Garnett chimed in. In a new interview, KG says he has a different level of respect for MJ. Garnett put Jordan on a pedestal, calling him a god, while simply viewing LeBron as, quote, the little homie. Shannon, how much does this hurt LeBron's go case? It doesn't hurt it at all. Skip, you have to understand that when Kev Kevin Garnett was eight years old, and Joe, when Jordan got into the league, when Kevin Garnett got into the league, Jordan was in his 12th season. And Kevin Garnett spent his last year of high school ball at where, Skip? In Chicago. Mm -hmm. So, I mean, most guys, if you're from that area, er, uh, area Chicago, Jordan is, Jordan is it. It's just like if you're in Detroit, Isaiah Thomas is it. Mm -hmm. Just like if you're in L.A., Magic Johnson was it. Mm -hmm. If you were in Boston, Larry Bird was it. No, and I get it, Skip, because you have to understand, when Kevin Garnett, when, when LeBron got into the league, Kevin Garnett was already in his third, he was already in his eighth season. Mm. So he look at that man, that's the little homie, that's the little homie. But all of a sudden, the little homie grew up and took over the block. Mm. And look, man, uh, uh, Magic Johnson, when Larry, Magic Johnson did not fear Michael Jordan, he did not. Mm. Was no threat. Larry Bird did not fear Michael Jordan, was no threat. Couldn't get out. He couldn't get out of the East. He, in the 80s, when the Magic and Bird was at their apex, your guy could not get out of the East. Mm. It wasn't until Larry's back had given out on him. You know he was on his last legs. And that's what happens when you go to the finals year after year after year. Look what he did. Mm. Go ahead, Skip. Okay, my turn. <sighs> Shannon Sharp, this was yet another nail in your quote unquote goat coffin. And I wanna publicly thank Kevin Garnett for saying this because he just nailed it for me. And yes, he did cross over Michael in those last three years in Chicago. So he saw it up close and personal, but he just said, Michael Jordan, I looked at as an effing God. I thought he was my version of what basketball looked like. That's what I hear from so many ex-players who know Jordan the way I know him through covering him. And then his almost dismissive response about LeBron was, he was more like little homie. Here's little homie growing up. And man, little homie is getting better than everybody during his era, obviously. GD, says Kevin Garnett. Well, that puts it in the right perspective for me because... Obviously, Kevin's about eight years older than LeBron, but he yeah. got to see LeBron at his worst, too. Because well, hold on, hold on. Wait, hold on, I'm look. talking. It's 2010. What happened in the Eastern Conference semifinals? That was the year in which LeBron played, I thought, his greatest game ever in game three to go up two games to one. And then what happened in four, five, and six? Uh, reportedly, said a member of his inner circle, LeBron had to be sedated before those three yeah. games, four, five, and six, in which he and his Cavaliers cratered. And the owner, Dan Gilbert, eventually accused LeBron of quitting in those three games. And Kevin Garnett got to see that up close and very personal. Me, but, yes, thank you but for here, closing but here's the, the GOAT case for the No, 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 but here's the thing. So what happened? When LeBron James got a comparable team, how many series that once LeBron James got a comparable team to the one Kevin Garnett was playing on, how many times did Kevin Garnett beat LeBron in a series once he got a comparable team? Yeah, uh, you know what? That's he, what the little he homie did. In and he just kept the discussion That's what the little going, homie guys. did to him. Thank Moving you, KG. Moving on for now. No mercy. The Lakers won their second straight OT game last night, and Russell Westbrook finished with a triple-double and led the team in scoring with 25 points. So, Shannon, how much better are you feeling about your Lakers right now? I feel a little better because I believe they got a quality win. The Miami, the Miami Heat are a very good, a very good basketball team, Skip, and they play well. They play the right way. They play defense. They move the ball. So in order, and, and for them to play this well and how they came back and won this ball game, but I was most encouraged, Skip, about the shooting that I saw from Malik Monk, Wayne Ellington, knowing that once LeBron gets back, the floor is going to be even more space and guys will get even better looks. So this was an impressive win for me for the Lakers. Mm. If the season ended today, your Lakers would be in the play-in tournament with the Grizzlies, Kings, and Blazers. 
Ah. Okay. So when LeBron does it finally return, the day. okay, well, it doesn't. But when he does finally return, as we're seeing on a nightly basis from the roller coaster ride that is Russell Westbrook, it's going to take LeBron a couple of months to figure out if or even if he can figure out a way to play with Russell Westbrook. And in so doing, I, I don't, I'm not even sure you're going to be able to make the playoffs at that point because you still have a Kendrick Nunn, an Ariza. you got other players who haven't played a lick, THT. And how are you going to figure out your chemistry on the fly? It, it feels like your, your growth has already been stunted to a dangerous point. We'll find out. Your playing time, once LeBron gets back and he's healthy, your playing time is going to be based on how well you play when you're in there. These minutes, I mean, you've got a lot of guys getting 37, 34 minutes, and it might not be that. Well, the Lakers, it's still early, but, you know, those wins matter. Uh, team morale, at least. No mercy. Deion Sanders is reportedly in the mix for the vacant TCU head coaching job after an impressive interview. Shannon, would you like to see Dion get this job? Part of me would, because I think he'd be a great hire. He knows the Dallas area. He's a heck of a recruiter. He loves the kids. But a part of me would be disappointed because he'd be leaving Jackson State. And I hate that for the HBCUs, but I think this would be a great hire if he were to get this job at TCU. I second your emotion about leaving Jackson State. I would prefer to see Dion stay. I would, I would too, Skip, but I think the thing is that he wants to ascend. And it, it's, it's funny that no one wanted him when he was right there at Trinity at the school, right there in Dallas, but now Good he point. goes and build a, help build a program at Jackson State. Not everybody's knocking down He's his door. He's just been an incredible recruiter. We'll have to see. Skip Shannon, great stuff today again. Happy Veterans Day. That's all for Undisputed. Heard is on now. Have a good one.